All right, so today I've got something really exciting. It's the brand new Wacom Intuos Pro Small. <laughs> So we've already had the medium and the large, but now we have the release of the small. And let's pull this out of the box right now and have a look. All right, let's see what we've got here. First of all, we have the Pro Pen 2. And this pen is great. It has 9,196 levels of pressure sensitivity, which is a lot. <laughs> And the nice thing about these pens is they're just nice, lightweight, well-balanced, and also they don't need a battery, so never have to recharge it. And notice we get a little base for it here. If we pop open the base, we've got 10 spare nibs, uh, different types of nibs for different purposes. It makes it feel like more like a brush or a pen or a pencil. And also the very hole right there is where we actually grab the pen and we can use that to pull the nibs out. And then we've got a cable. Comes with a nice rubber tie. Good thing about this cable, couple of things. One, it's super long. I hate it when people don't give you long enough cables. This side here is USB-C and it goes to a regular USB. So you can plug that into your laptop. And let's take a look at the tablet itself. So if we look at the back of it, it's a nice brushed aluminum with rubber feet here. Nicely built, same quality as in the medium and the large. We've got an on off switch on the side here. And of course, this is where we plug it in. And the nice thing about USB-C is there's no wrong way to plug it in. So if you want the cable up or down, depending on how you prefer to work, you can easily do that, get it out of the way. So right now it's set to right-handed, which means I can draw on it here and I can use the touch ring and the express keys here with my left hand as I work. If you are left-handed, flip it the other way. In the interface, you just change the handedness to left-handed. You draw here and use your right hand. So it's an ambidextrous tablet. One of the other things I love about it is you can unplug the cable and it works perfectly on Bluetooth. And so the, the feeling here just feels very much like a pencil on a piece of paper, has a really nice feel. So let's have a look at the sizes. Here's the large, there's the medium, and the small. And so now the small rounds out the full product line. So we've got large, medium, and small. They all share the same features. They all work with the Pro Pen 2. They have the express keys and touch ring, they work on Bluetooth wireless, and of course the pen is batteryless on all of them. So when Wacom redesigned this line of tablets, our working area actually stayed the same as it did on the previous generation, but they shrunk down the edges. So the actual footprint on these is smaller. So the large, even though it's quite large, is not actually much bigger than the footprint on the previous medium. The medium, the footprint, is not that much larger than the previous small, and the small here is tiny, but it still has that same working area, which is a lot of good working area here. This thing is small, it's light, it's portable, that means I can just take it anywhere with me. In fact, it's about the size of an iPad, maybe a little smaller than an iPad. So I just keep this in my computer bag, which means that when I'm on the go and I'm traveling, I'm going to clients locations, I'm working out of a coffee shop. Uh, if you're a student and you're carrying this around all day, you can just pop it in your backpack. Doesn't take up a lot of weight or a lot of space. So it's really nice to have that portability, but to still have the full features that are on the rest of the tablets. Another good thing about the tablet, not only is it a pen tablet, which gives me this pressure sensitivity as well as tilt sensitivity. So that means I can press harder to do things or I can tilt to kind of create chiseled edges and do different types of things over there. But the other thing is it actually has multi gesture touch. So I can actually use this as a trackpad. So I can be drawing here, I can be using it as a trackpad and then I can be hitting keyboard shortcuts right there. So this here is the gist of the tablet. Why don't we plug it into the computer right now and put it through its paces and have a look at some of the features that are available. Right now, let's hook it up to our computer. Now I could use the cable and I could plug in with the cable, but what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna pair it to the Bluetooth 
And all we need to do to do that is just to tap here and you'll see now this blue light flashes on and off means it's in pairing mode. Let's go to the computer and let's go up to our Bluetooth settings. But let's pop open our preferences here and we're looking for something new, which is the Intuos Pro Small. Let's choose connect. Now it says it's connected and we can see on our screen everything is connected. All right, and we can see our window comes up here. Let's click on start. We're going to choose a tablet orientation. So if I want to use it right handed, I'm going to choose this. If I want to use left handed, choose that option. Just choose next. We can import our settings from the medium. I'm going to import that. That's awesome. Let's choose next. Now we can turn the touch and gestures on or off. Now these are actually something that we do on the side of the tablet. You might think that's a power switch, but that's not actually a power switch there. That enables me to turn touch on or touch off. So if you're working and you're navigating and everything, turn it on. But then when you're getting into some real fine detail, you don't want to bump anything, just pop it off. And then only the pen will have an effect on the tablet at that point. Okay, so let's just choose next. The wireless connection, which we've already done. And we can do this later. Let's just go next and we're done. So this is the Wacom Desktop Center. Okay, now it's connected. Let's go down to our tablet settings. Under preferences, make sure you install the latest Wacom driver. I can't stress that enough. Um, people don't install the driver or they have an old driver. Features don't work or just the pen just doesn't feel right. And that's because you want to make sure that new driver is on there and things should work fine. So let's go down here. We're going to go under our settings and here we are inside the settings. Notice here that the battery is about 43%. So it comes about halfway charged. Now, how do you charge the battery? Well, simple. Just plug this into your computer and work off the cable and you can actually be charging while you're working. And maybe you're working on the new MacBook Pro and you're thinking, oh no, what about the USB-C connection? Well, you could just plug this <laughs> into a portable battery um, or just plug it into any USB socket, charge your tablet and you're good to go. And the batteries last a long time. All right, so let's have a look at the settings right now. Okay, so we can go to the functions, enables us to set up the hardware on the tablet itself, touch rings, express keys. The touch here, these are our touch settings, so we can um, just adjust these kind of different things. So we've got our touch options. We've got gestures. We can change some of these, set them up, and you can also go through and see what's set up there. And of course, we can go in here and we can start to set up some of your own gestures using two, three, four, or even five finger gestures. And you can actually do a lot of things with that. Then the pens, we go in here, we can set up the pen, uh, the eraser. So that means we can do different things here. So we can set up that eraser to work as a keyboard shortcut. It doesn't have to just work as an eraser. There's a lot of different things we can do with that. And mapping. So you don't have to use the whole tablet. And I know a lot of people will do that. So this is our screen area here. It's mapped to the tablet. We could go to a portion of the tablet here. So you could actually go here and just work in this portion here. And I know a lot of retouches do that. So we click OK. And now for me to go all the way across the screen, I only have to go here. So now I just work in this very, very small area. And I know some retouchers will do that and they wear out their tablet here in this corner. So if that's you, I would recommend remap it to different areas so you can get some even wear across your tablet. However, working with the small tablet, I don't think there's so much need for you to uh, map it. You know, whereas you're working on a big tablet and you're moving around like this, all we're going to do here is just drag that back, click OK. And now that means from this corner is the corner of the screen. This corner is the other corner of the screen. So we're using the whole tablet now. And this is our express keys. We can put them on the left, right, and we can even put them on top and bottom. So if you prefer to work this way, you can work like this. You could put your keys up here. You could have them down there. You have full flexibility the way you want to orient your tablet. Okay, so let's look at the first ones. The most obvious ones are express keys. So we can set these express keys to do different kinds of things. And we can see right now, these, that's what these are set for. And we can change them. We can change them to clicks. And you can see there, that would be the equivalent of a middle click if you're working in 3D, left, right click, etc. Um, we can do different settings on the tablet, precision mode, 
means that you move a lot and it only moves a little bit on the screen. And that's really useful for when you're doing things like going through menus and you accidentally bump them. Use uh, precision, you're not gonna have that issue. So there's different things we can do with that. Um, and then keyboard here, we can go in and this is probably the most useful and most common thing here is to go in and set a keystroke. So may maybe I was gonna do Command Z and we're gonna call this undo. And now that one will undo whenever I hit that button. So you can set them up to do different things. But notice right now, I'm just going in all or other. We can specifically set these for programs. So notice we've got some different applications in here. We can scroll through the applications. And I've got Photoshop CC 2019. So I can go in here. Notice it's all reset again. So why don't we set a keyboard here? We'll do a keystroke. And this is good for difficult keystrokes like shift option command e and that does a stamp visible and click ok so now instead of having to do all those i can just uh, set it there and the way i kind of like to set these up usually is the top three will be things that I do a lot, undo, redo, different things like that and then the bottom ones i'll set for modifier keys, option, shift and command and in that way i can do my keyboard shortcuts without having to reach over the keyboard all the time i can do a lot of that from the pen now the forward and back buttons on this pen you can also set these buttons to different keyboard shortcuts let me show you on the pen here notice it's set to double click right click and we can do these keyboard shortcuts all these things. Some people like to set the forward and back button and sometimes I like to do that too for undo and redo. So that would just be command Z or command shift Z or control Z or control shift Z on Windows or control Z or command shift Z in Canada, New Zealand, Australia and the UK. So depending on how you want to talk, you can customize the toggle switch on the pen as well. Back to our functions. So those are our express keys, our touch ring. All right, so we can set this to do different things. Uh, rotate, keystroke, scroll, and zoom. Okay, here we are inside of Photoshop. Let's just talk about basic pen pressure right now. So why don't we go down and we're gonna grab our brush. We've just got a regular brush here, and this is our brush panel. This is how we get into our different brushes. So there's a couple of things we're gonna look at. Shape dynamics, that's gonna be size. So if I set this to pen pressure, that means if I draw a light touch, I get a thin line. As I go harder, I can vary the thickness of that line by varying how much pressure I'm putting on the tablet. Now, the other way we could do is we could change it to pen tilt. That means depending on how I tilt that pen, we're going to get a different thickness. See, as I straighten that up, we get a thicker stroke. So one I like to use the most is transfer and opacity. I set to pen pressure. And now this means that if I paint light, I get a very, very light misting of that brush. As I push harder, I get a darker amount of that brush. Okay, so that means that when I'm working on images, let me just pinch to expand. See how I can just go in here now and I'm just navigating with two fingers. And I can get in here and I can start to do things like, let's go down here. And I'm just going to create a new layer. Since I can pinch to zoom in or out, I don't think I really need my touch ring on that. What I'm going to do is change that to brush size. So let me just go to my preferences here. I'm going to choose my tablet. I'm going to choose my touch ring. And I'm going to set this to keystroke. And now what this enables me to do is hit the left bracket key and hit the right bracket key. And I'm just going to call that one size. Click OK. Now when I go in here and I use this, notice now I can change my brush size very, very easily by doing that. Now another way I like to work is this little padlock. I like to lock that down. So that means if I change a brush, pressure is still only going to apply to transfer. I don't like it working on size without my knowledge, so I'm going to lock that to off. So no matter which brush I choose, no matter what settings happen, this is always going to be set to pen pressure for opacity and the brush size is going to be left alone. You can also change them up here. Here's our size, here's opacity, and this is flow if we're airbrushing.
So why don't I just drop this down a little bit and I'm going to make this a 10% opacity and you know I would do kind of dodging and burning now and let's kind of see how this feels with this tablet. See how I'm just adding a little shadow in there, a little shade, give it a bit more dimension. In fact make that brush a little smaller so I want to get in here and just okay. So this touch ring feels really good for changing my brush size a lot. Because sometimes when I'm dodging and burning, it can be a lot of work to change the brush size. So see what I'm doing here? Just adding a little depth here, dropping this into the shadows. All right, so why don't we flip this around and now we're going to start painting with white. So I'm just going to drop this down to 10%. And I might just put a little highlight along here, you know, just where it's catching the light a little bit little bit on here. Maybe pop this up to 30 because I want to just give this a little bit more just brighter lights here and I don't want to paint them so many times. So it's just kind of hitting those areas, see that? And it's just giving it a little bit more shine. Now if I really want to make this shine I would give, use a harder edge and that would make it look very reflective almost like it was wet or shiny but I don't want that. I want it to look a little bit more like this, not quite so shiny. And see what I'm doing here? I'm just adding that highlight just where that would be just catching the light a little bit. Okay, so if we have a look at this and see what we've done, that's before and that's after. So you see what we're doing? We're just adding some depth there by dodging and burning with this pen. All right, so I've just been playing around with this a little bit, and honestly, this feels exactly the same as when I'm working on the medium or the large. This definitely feels like the Pro. Um, there's cheaper tablets out there, and it just doesn't have that nice feel. I mean, this just feels like pencil on paper. Um, there's no lag. It's um, good pressure response. And a lot of those 8,000 levels, a lot of those are pushed into the very light areas. So you can just use a very, very light touch and that's one of the things I love about the Wacom brand versus others. So I like to do very, very light shading sometimes. I started to get a broken line. It wasn't registering. And in fact, just pretty much every other tablet I've ever used does that. That's one of the things I like about the Wacom technology is I can use a very, very light touch and it's still going to register. And that enables you to just shade things more accurately and build things up like you were using a real pencil in the real world. So, you know, right now, you know, the ease of use, the convenience of this, I really love it. This is going to go in my bag and this is going to be with my laptop all the time. It takes up hardly any space. Now, the price for the small is $249. So it's $250 for this. So I'm really excited to show you the brand new Wacom Intuos Pro Small. Now, one last thing. How do you say Wacom? I've heard people say Wacom, Wacom. The proper way of saying it is Wacom. And the reason it's that is Wa is Japanese for harmony and Com is for computer. So it's not Wacom or Wacom, it's Wacom is the uh, correct way of pronouncing that. I'm curious, did you guys know that? Let me know in the comments underneath and also let me know in the comments underneath what you guys think about this tablet. And also if you love Photoshop and Lightroom, consider hitting that subscribe button right now and then you're going to get a new tutorial from me every single week. Ring that notification bell so you know when I upload, which is usually every Tuesday. And quite often I'll do on Friday and Saturday as well. So anyway, guys, if you like this, share it with your friends, tell your friends about it, and smash that like button into dust. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.